Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm meteorologist Bob Van Dillen. The first spring tornado outbreak of the year, that probably happens on Friday. Let's get right to it. Here's a satellite picture and another huge area of low pressure coming in across California. It's another atmospheric river event that happened earlier in the week. That energy is going to slide through California into the four corners, ultimately open up across the plain states and dig in. Let's look at the 500 millibar level on the GFS model. Where's the energy? Where's the vorticity? Where's all the spin? Mostly across the West Coast. Here's the way it looks right now. I'm going to zoom this through. Here we go on Thursday. I'm going to have the energy go right through the four corners. It begins to open up Thursday evening. And here we are on Friday. Notice that big trough digging right down through the Plain States into Texas with all that energy rounding the base, ready to eject into the lower Mississippi Valley. That is where the energy is located for the day on Friday. All right, with that in mind, all the energy coming in, dipping towards the Gulf of Mexico. We've got an SPC alert already. Mississippi Valley, especially the lower Mississippi Valley, be on alert on Friday afternoon for tornadoes. Here's what they're looking at. Now, before the energy even gets there, ahead of it, temperatures are going to start climbing up, and that will be the fuel for the fire along with the humidity. Let me show you the temperatures. Pretty warm for this time of year ahead of that cold front. Here we are on Thursday, low to mid-80s, Texas coast through Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, stretching into Georgia and Florida. Overnight, it cools down, of course, and then on Friday, a little bit of cloud cover is going to keep the temperatures down a bit, but I still want you to look at the darker shade of red in Louisiana. Lower Mississippi and Alabama, that's where we're going to start seeing those temperatures climb into the low 80s. That is warm for this time of year. Hey, how about the dew points? They're going to start to climb as well. The dew point, a measure of how much water is in the actual atmosphere. The more water you have, the more fuel for the thunderstorm. So let me show you this right here. I'm going to show you on Thursday afternoon. You can see the dew points are climbing into the 60s. Generally thinking for severe weather, you need at least a 55 degree dew point. And overnight on Thursday into Friday, you can see the dew points climbing into the mid 60s. That is going to make it unstable ahead of the cold front of boundary. So the juice is definitely there. Look at that dew point on Friday afternoon. Low 70s from Texas through Louisiana and stretching into lower Arkansas and western Mississippi. A lot of fuel out there for these supercells to start to develop. We've got the energy coming in. We've got the dew points. We've got the heat. All we need is a trigger at the surface to get the air moving upwards, and that's what we have. Look at the surface winds right here. I'm going to start out early on Friday morning. Look at the convergence going in across Texas, and then it moves slowly right through Dallas and Fort Worth. And then you can see by Friday afternoon, it's getting close to Texarkana. And then Friday evening, there's the convergence line right around Arkansas and Louisiana. Those storms are going to be immediately ahead of it. You can see storms along that front as well. The whole thing moving quickly over to the east on Friday afternoon. But once the air starts to rise, it turns into the clouds and the thunderstorms, and then it taps into the strong jet streams that are aloft. Let me show you the 850 winds. This is a wind about five to 6,000 feet above the surface, and it is screaming 50 knot winds. That is going to be the forecast right out of the south-southwest. Watch that darker shade of orange. It's received a 45 to 50 knot winds. It will continue to slide eastward. Here you are on Friday morning. And that will continue to strengthen over the daytime hours. So look at that red shaded area around Arkansas. 50 knot winds on Friday afternoon. The whole thing gets a little stronger. And ultimately overnight as that low level jet stream kicks in, it screams into Mississippi. That's the lower jet. Let's go a little higher up in the atmosphere. 700 millibar winds. They are screaming out of the southwest. Let me show you what I mean. Here you are on Friday morning early. You see the red shaded area. Those are 50 knot winds. Notice they come into play, 50 to 60 knot winds to 70 around Arkansas Friday afternoon, and then they really start to scream out. Those are 85 to 90 knot winds going right into the Mississippi Valley on Friday evening. Also notice the wind direction out of the southwest. We've got some veering going on as you go higher in the atmosphere. Veering, that means rotation, and that also means speed and directional shear when you look at the jet streams. It's starting to get intense on Friday afternoon. Now, this is impressive. The 500 millibar level, look at the winds right here. This is the jet. When you see the purple shaded area, that's 80 to 90 knot winds. That will continue to strengthen and move through. Here we are on Friday afternoon, getting some blue shading in there. That is over 100 knots, and that is screaming out of the southwest as well. We're getting the veering action. We're getting the jets. We're getting the exhaust. We're getting all kinds of strengthening near Memphis. That is early on Saturday morning, so those lines will continue to press and plow through western Tennessee, northern parts of Mississippi, and Alabama as well. So now we've got the building, we've got the convergence, we've got the spin, all it needs is exhaust. So for that, you look at the 200 millibar level. Here's what we're looking at here. 200 millibar jet, it's gonna be up to north a little bit farther. Let me zoom this through. 
This is Thursday afternoon, getting into Friday. Here it comes. Little left exit region right there. That makes it even more enhanced. So we're watching that slide south of the region and then pressing over to the east. So we've got everything coming into play. What about that supercell parameter? Is it high? Let's look. The supercell composite parameter. Let's take a look at this thing because it's starting to build also. Is again the GFS model. It's not for sure, but it's a pretty good indicator. Here we go. This is on Thursday morning. I'll take you through that. Thursday into Friday. And then Friday morning, it starts to build. Here we go on Friday afternoon. Notice the yellow shaded area right there. That's where you see a composite index of about 9.5 to 10. All you need is really six or more to make sure that the supercells are going to actually happen. Now that we've got nine and 10, it's a good indication that we will see supercells. Now, what is that supercell composite parameter? Well, it takes into account the instability, the wind shear, and the helicity, which is essentially the spin. When you see this getting up there, you know you're in for an afternoon. And just for giggles, let's look at the SIGTOR, the significant tornado parameter. Look at these numbers right here. You can see on Friday afternoon, they start to climb up there. And you look at the scale off to your right. I think we peek out in the yellows right here, which is about a three. That would yield a tornado of about an EF0 to EF3. And again, that would be within the supercells, not within the line itself. So there is that significant tornado parameter. It's still starting to peak up as well. So all the parameters are starting to come together. We've got the daytime heating. We've got the dew points. We've got the energy coming in. We've got shear. We've got directional shear. And we've got some vorticity stretching on by. Let's get the timing on this son of a gun. Let's look at the GFS model. I'm going to start here on Friday morning. That's when the line of showers and storms are racing up through the Ohio Valley. That's essentially the stationary boundary. That will not be severe. What we're worried is, is how much sunshine we're going to see ahead of the cold front as it dives to the east. Watch that line begin to develop right around Arkansas, Louisiana, into Mississippi and Tennessee. That is Friday afternoon, stretching out through Friday evening, and then overnight into Saturday morning. The whole line races right through Georgia, the Carolinas, and turns into a major storm around the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley. Look at the winds pick up right there. Rain on the east side, a mixture of snow and rain around Chicago on the back side. This storm is not going to be over once the severe weather stuff ends on Friday. Saturday, it turns into a big troublemaker for the Northeast. All right, everybody, now you know what's going on. The first significant tornado outbreak of the springtime. It's most likely going to happen on Friday. Stay safe, everybody. And if you like this update, please hit like. If you really liked it, heck, subscribe to my page. I'd appreciate it. All right, we'll see you.